Good evening. Um, my, my name is Stefan Kadlaboski. I started a company about 15 years ago. Uh, I was working in London. I was born in London. Um, three young children. Wasn't very happy with my job. Living from paycheck to paycheck. Uh, big mortgage. And I quit to start my own business. In no time at all, I was, I was in real trouble. Uh, the business of my thing got off the ground. Um, an, an investor who made me a big promise pulled out, and I was faced with ruin before I even started. So I had to get cracking on my own. And through negotiating some deals with some banks to get stock in, I was I was up and running. Now like most people, I, you know, I, I didn't like negotiating. We don't, we, we tend not to enjoy negotiating. But I, I taught myself quickly and I learned very, very quickly. And I made some really big mistakes when I first started. But I also did some things very, very well. At the end of the session, I, my aim is that you will feel more comfortable negotiating. Now, when we're negotiating, it's very broad. It's a very broad subject. You're going to learn how to stack the odds in your favour. You can't script negotiating. If you go to talk to people, you cannot script it, and we'll get to that later. You'll see why. We're going to use empathy to get what we want. People often think, no, no, you've got, to be, you've got to be hard, you've got to be a bully, you've got to pound people into making a decision to you know, do things your way. It's not true. That I learned very, very quickly. And we'll talk about empathy. And we're going to, listen, we're going to understand the power of listening. Listening is probably our strongest negotiating tool. There is a very, very simple technique that avoids negotiating right at the very, very start. It, it is a negotiating technique, but it's something we very, very rarely use, and if you use it, you will win over half the time. Who knows what it is? Gaining rapport. That's fantastic. We're going to get to rapport in a minute, actually. That's very, very good. It's not rapport. There's something we don't do, and we should do it more often. Be up front about what we're looking for? Sorry? Be up more up front about what we're actually wanting. Almost, yeah, almost. Yeah, you're getting there. So, the types of negotiation. Sorry, but, but I've, I've jumped a slide up here. We have spontaneous. We have what's called premeditated, where spontaneous is negotiations we get into sort of on the spur of the moment, or some of it's thrust upon us. Um, or we'll book a meeting with a boss, or we want to go and buy a house, or we want to go and buy a car, and we, we, we will premeditate it, we will set a meeting up with someone. But when it comes to something we don't do, we don't do enough of this, and that is ask. Just ask for what we want. We don't do that. I have employees, one of my employees, fantastic guy, I did, he, he didn't get a pay rise for four years. And I was with my accountant, and we saw Daniel's name down there, and I called Daniel in, and, he's, and I said to him, Daniel, look, you know, I'm going to give you a pay rise. And he said, oh, thanks, Seth, I, 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 I was going to ask you, but I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to bother you. So that's one thing we don't do, we, 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 we don't ask enough. And you'll be surprised. Go into John Lewis. Look at some furniture. This, this drives my wife crazy. If you see a, a, a sofa, you want to buy it, 800 quid. Just say to them, well, what's your best price on that? And you'll see the guy will just, you know, he'll, he'll feel a bit uncomfortable first of all. But no, no, seriously, what's your best price? And I'll tell you what, you'll be surprised how they'll go and they'll come back and they'll go, how about 
Now, you want to be cheap, but it's certainly worth asking. <coughs> Believe me, it, it works a lot. It works a lot. Again, if you're talking about a pay rise with your boss, you know, ask. You know, don't think that you're going to have to sit down and have some type of um, meeting with him where, you know, he may say, okay, fine. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'll look at that. Fine. We don't tend to ask. We don't ask enough. Now, there's a certain group of us that are fantastic negotiators. Now, this has nothing to do with... Nothing to do with... Um, religion, sex, um, race. There, there's a certain group of us that are fantastic negotiators. Any idea? When I show you, you're like, oh yeah, yeah. Kids. Who said kids? Children. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Children are fantastic negotiators. Why? Because they ask. They ask. They're happy to ask us. Because, they, because we're the parent, they're familiar with us, they're happy to ask us a question. But for some reason, as we get older, all of a sudden we become scared of asking. Oh, I'm not going to ask that stranger. I'm not going to ask that person. I won't ask my boss. You know, he, may, he, may, he may bite my head off. You know, he may say something I don't want to hear. But we ask. Now, something else children do that makes them even better negotiators. Exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> they ask and they ask again. And they ask again. My youngest son, Adam, 16 years old now, but he, he, he can just chip away at me. My kids aren't spoiled, you know? My, my kids are very grounded, but he just knew what buttons to push with me and we'll just chip away chip away about football shirt something he wanted to, you know and it, it works believe me it works and you know in in the business i mean i own new car franchises volvo mazda and i have a property company as well and i've got a bunch of salespeople working for me and one of the sayings in my business now oh, by the way in this evening you're going to get quite a few you're going, to, you're going to learn about the car business a little bit, behind the scenes. So when you go and buy a car, you may know what's happening, all right? Um, but we're not saying in the industry. And that is persistence, persistence, breaks down resistance. And this is very true. When it comes to people coming into our showroom, and we get into a negotiation asking for the business, on average, it is the third time the salesperson asks, the customer says yes. Not the first time. But what happens is, with most salespeople, is they, they get the first no. Or I want to think about it. And they back off. So, again, this is something that, if you want something, don't be scared to ask. Ask and ask again. Now, we're going to get into preparing ourselves. If you're going to a bank to raise money to start your own company, if you want to go and negotiate a pay rise with your boss, You've got to prepare yourself. Preparation is everything. The person who's most prepared will always win. Visualise the desired result. You've got to get a clear picture in your mind of what you want. When you come out of the meeting, or whatever you're doing, visualise it so you can see it. You know, you can see it in your mind's eye. Best thing, night before, you're lying in bed, you've got a meeting the next day, 
the purchase of a house, talking to your boss, whatever. Visualize the result you want as you go to sleep. Very, very powerful. Very powerful technique. Helps you, helps you keep focused on the actual negotiations itself. When you've got an end point, you've got a point at the end you want to get to, it's fixed in your mind because negotiations will take, they will take twists and turns. Research, research, research. Crikey, this is, you need to know what you're dealing with. You, you're not on Dragon's Den. They watch Dragon's Den, you get these people with fantastic ideas and they go up and you get the dragons will just start asking them questions about the numbers. And you see them panicking, sweating, they don't know. If you watch that program, they'll always back the person who knows the numbers, can ask that question. So if any of you in here want to start your own business, you need to go and borrow some money. When you go to the bank, if you're prepared, you get a yes. So you go in there and you don't know. You can't answer questions on it. On the market you're going for, your turnover, profitability. In a job, in a job um, you know, if you're talking about a pay increase with your boss, you need, you, what you need is examples. You can't really say, I want 10 grand more. I want 5 grand more a year. Why? <coughs> Why five grand? Oh, I'm glad you asked because of this, because of that. You're prepared for it. You've done your research. Know everything. So you're challenged on anything, you can answer it. Evening. How you doing? Hi. Any questions so far on this? At any time, stop me. Any questions, just please, you know, please ask me. At the end of it, we'll have, we'll have a, a question session at the end, but if you have any questions during it, please, you know, feel free to ask me. During the negotiation, you've got to prepare yourself for anything. It's been described as dancing in the dark on a table. You, you don't really know which way it's going to go. So you've got, you've, got to have, you've got to prepare yourself and you've got to have an open mind with, with before you negotiate with anyone, especially your boss, especially about promotion. You may have things you may have that you perhaps don't want to hear. So you've got to be able to react to that. Keep an open mind, very, very important. And have the confidence and belief in your ability. You'll be surprised how good you are. You know, I, I wasn't at all. I mean, I, you know, I, 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 was, I was appalling at it. I was terrified of it. But all of a sudden I realised that through a few techniques, through simple techniques, I could get people on my side. When you get people on your side, it really builds confidence. You'll be surprised how good you are at negotiating. I mean, who, who, just raise your hands, who's not particularly happy about going into negotiate a car deal? Are you happy to do that? Yeah? Oh, so that's good, some of confidence. So, I mean, a lot of people don't like doing it. They really don't like doing it. They're going to get lied, cheated to, they're nervous, they're scared, they might pay too much. You know, talking about pay rise with your boss, you, you might hear things, some things you don't particularly want to hear. So, so we often don't like doing it. Family disputes. Again, big part of negotiating. You may be involved in a situation in the family where you've got to mediate this. You've got to try and sort out some feud here. And you've got to keep everyone happy. And again, all these things, you'll see these things, all these things that will apply if you use them properly. Listening is your best weapon. We all think we're good listeners. 
during a negotiation, no matter what it is, it's the two ears, one mouth. You've got to listen. It's the most powerful negotiating skill. The best negotiators in this world are the best listeners. Why? If you listen to someone, they, if, if you're negotiating with someone, they may want to hold something back. They may want to keep, they want to just hold something back. They're scared of coming out with it. But if you listen properly and you ask the right questions, they will tell you. You've got to listen for it. Not sure if any came to Dorothea's um, talk about a month ago on leadership. Dorothy in the back of the room there. She's a, she's a listening guru. She's in uh, next month, aren't you? Are you next month again? Yeah, on um, on networking. Is that right? Fantastic, fantastic speaker. Listening, listening is, is key. Because I'll tell you what we do. When we're when we're negotiating with someone, or we're mediating, or you know, negotiations can be, they can be a bit fraught at times. Now, it may not be nice calm, it could be, it could be, it could get a bit heated. <coughs> and this is how we listen. We're having a conversation with someone. What we do is we listen to the first 25% of what they say. Then we start to think about responding to what they've said. We then plan our response in our heads. We then rehearse our response. This is why they're still talking to us. And then we respond. But what have we done? We've missed three quarters of what they said. Sorry, excuse me, I've got a bit of a, a, bit of a sore throat the last few days. Then. We don't tend to listen. And the more heated the discussion, the less, less we hear. So practice, can't you think of this? Practice, when you're talking to someone, in fact, you're trying to negotiate with someone, a family, a child, or at work, I guess you could be you know, a dispute at work with someone. So I want you to do something, you don't want to do it. You know, you could do that. But just, just listen. Just listen to the whole thing they say. And, and then respond. Don't worry. Because as human beings, what we tend to do is we don't like... We don't like... We don't like long pauses. When we're in a, a, a talk with someone, we don't like to sort of pause. We want to bang, fire the answer straight back at them. The next time you're having a discussion with anyone, consciously listen to everything they've said. And it, it, it takes some training, it really does. But just do not try and prepare your response, because you will. You'll prepare your response as soon as you start to get the gist of what they're saying to you. You will then start to create a response. Then you rehearse it, then you deliver it. I've not quite heard what they said. How many times have you been in a conversation with someone and you're thinking, this person's not listening to me? They're making a valid point. And you can see, you watch their eyes, you can see in their eyes, they're, 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 they're moving around, they're looking up, they're listening to what you say, and all of a sudden they're off now and they're, they're preparing you. You know, bad negotiators. For now, you're good negotiators, you're going to listen to people. Believe me, it really, really works. So long pauses are fine. They give you time to think. You know, what we want to do is get pushed into something. People try and convince us of their ways. They want, they want us to do something that we don't particularly want to do. But you can go... Have a long pause. Especially the spontaneous thing with the other side that came up. 
if you're pushed into negotiations that you're not expecting, you're challenged at work. Listen to it. Pause. I want to think about that. Usually the one who talks the most loses. Very true. I'm, I'm going to let you a little secret here. That's just a big secret. When you are... Who's bought a car from a car show recently? Last few years. Anyone that negotiated a car deal at a car showroom? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what happens is the salesman will, will present figures, we'll lay them out on the table. And generally, the figures are not particularly to your liking the first time around. Um, and they'll present them and they'll go quiet. Do it for a reason. The saying is the first person who speaks loses. And you'll, you'll look at you, the, the customer tends to look over at the figures and then look back. They look at them again. And the salesman, a good salesman, will just go quiet. And it, from that point on, it's the first person, the first person to say anything. Generally, goes the, you know, the customer goes. Ooh, I'm not too happy with that, but if you could do something like that, throw some mats in or something. Well, done, deal's done. But next time it happens to you, I was always like one of my showrooms. Just to say nothing. <laughs> say nothing. I watch the salesman start getting very fidgety all of a sudden. Because he wants you to say something. And that's often a close, you know, no matter what it is. I'm just using that, 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 that as an example. This can be anything if you're negotiating. A pay rise. And you're not quite there with it. And the numbers are on the table and you look at it. Just keep quiet. Because a lot of people find it a bit uncomfortable. They find those silences a bit uncomfortable. And the first person to say something, generally, will not lose. It's a horrible word, lose. Well, or even TV, well... Are you saying that they'll, they'll basically crack and start giving something away, so it's not the end of the negotiation? Yeah. They give you a, like the, a window or a... Yeah, window. exactly, yeah. They'll, they'll say, well, oh, I'm not happy with that. If you can do something like a first time... They'll... they'll, they'll they, they often feel uncomfortable with the silence. So I round it is by offering something up. We offer something up. A good negotiator will then use that and will pose it to their advantage. Yes? On the fourth bullet point, improve how you listen. Yes. Say, for example, if I'm discussing about an issue with you, yeah. and if I have a premature idea about that issue, yeah. I won't listen because, you know, I have already decided that probably you are talking a different thing. Yeah. The other could be, you know, there are several obstacles. One could be the area where we have, we are, we are having our discussion. Yeah. There could be noise in other distracting yeah. uh, situations. So, I mean, my question is, how do you improve your listening in such scenarios? And the other thing is, um, I'm going to take you back to what you have said earlier, mm -hmm. that, uh, say for example, if uh, there is a discussion in the family, that you will try to keep everyone happy. Yeah, yeah. How, how, how would that be possible? <laughs> 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 We've got about five hours, we'll get into that. So. <laughs> no, it's... People get set in their ways. And... <clears throat> You know, we need maybe to mediate something. We need to sort of get everyone to move. So there's some sort of common ground. So we want, we want common ground. I saw mention rapport earlier on. I mean, rapport, well, this is perhaps not a family thing, but um, yeah, it, it's it, in a situation where you're negotiating 
over the purchase of something or a pay rise or something at work, listen, listen because they will tell you, they will tell you in a roundabout way what they want, even though they may want to be keeping it quiet. Now you can, you can get it out of them by asking questions. The, the family thing, I, I, I can't, I mean the family thing, hey it's a vast thing isn't it, it really is, you know, it could be anything, you know, um, but if, if you sit down with everyone and you listen to them, you listen to exactly what their concerns are, but really listen, and then ask secondary questions, I'm not happy with so and so, okay, may I ask why, well because of this, okay, well how's it making me feel, what, what brought that on? You know, ask secondary questions rather than go, he's not happy, he's not happy. And the more we, the more we dig into it, the more we dig into it, we, we, we can start extracting information that we can use. But, yeah, it's a family, the family thing's a little bit tricky one. You know, you'll know if you're good at it because your family will come to you to help, for you to help perhaps mediate between, you know, two, two sides. Does that answer your question, yeah? Okay, empathy. I'm often told, what do you mean empathy? We're negotiating here. Why empathise anyone? What's that going to do? Empathy saved this world from destruction. Now, I'll tell you how. When we empathise with people, we want to see it from their eyes. Now, this thing, the, the family thing just now. When people get so set in their ways, we look at it and go, you know, if, we've, if we see it, if we can put ourselves in their position, all of a sudden, we're empathising with them. Now, something magical happens when we do that. If we don't do it, we just collide. Or we argue. But the second we empathise with someone, and we do that by putting ourselves in their position. Now, a lot of you may think of this as being a position of weakness. But believe me, it gives you the ultimate power. I'll explain why. It first it builds trust and rapport. Who said rapport earlier on? Someone said the fantastic word rapport, yeah, rapport. When we've got rapport and trust with anyone, we can do something that we couldn't do before. Sorry, yeah, body, yeah. I pray, try, with, 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 um, with trust and rapport, we want to be very open with people. We want to sit down with people. We want to be open palms. We don't want to be defensive. We build rapport by mimicking how they breathe. You know this, you know this mirroring about this thing. So that can that can start generating rapport. If the person, if we don't, if we don't know them, we're sat with them. We've got limited time. We can start building rapport. We can do that by, by nice body language. Very important. Again, a vast, vast subject. But just think of open palms. We like an open palm. And we tend we tend to mirror people's breathing. When we do that, they feel relaxed. Once we have trust and rapport, we can ask those horrible, difficult questions we didn't want to ask before. When we're negotiating with people, we want to ask them, well, I would, I would like this. If we have no rapport or trust, we can only get no. If you have rapport and trust, you can ask those difficult questions. You could never ask those before. And you get those by seeing it through their eyes, 
building rapport, building trust. When you have that, you can ask that question. Back in 1962, Tommy Thompson was the, the, um, uh, the ambassador to, of America in Moscow, right during the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Russians were sending missiles to Cuba. <coughs> Kennedy said, right, that's it, we're invading Cuba. It was all out war. All out war involving the movement of nuclear weapons from Russia to Gaddafi in Cuba. And Tommy Thompson said to his boss, that was Kennedy, I can resolve this. I can resolve this issue with him. I know what's important to Khrushchev, who was the Prime Minister of, the, of, of, of Russia. I know what's important to him. All Khrushchev wanted to do was save Cuba being invaded. Tommy Thompson could see it through his eyes. He put himself in Khrushchev's position. He gave Khrushchev a way out. Because of that, there was no war. Now, that could have got, you know, we're talking nuclear weapons here. We're talking Cold War. We're talking missiles being parked right on America's, right on their, on their doorstep, 80 miles from, from the Florida coast. And it was called off because there was empathy. We, they, a, a guy, an American diplomat, empathised with Khrushchev. And it worked. And everyone came out a winner. Empathy builds relationships and it's a win-win. We want to empathize. We, we, what we want is we want this. We, we, we want rapport and trust. Because it's not short-termism. When you hear about these people selling timeshares in apartments, they pound you into it, pound you into it. They don't care about you down the road. But if we, have, if we empathize with somebody, we build relationships with them. We all come out winners. We can guarantee when someone wants your services again, they will come to you because you saw it from their eyes and you had rapport. Is that, there, sorry, yes? Isn't there a slight risk of judgment where you see the wrong things? Yeah. 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 It will very rarely happen, believe me. It will very rarely happen. The moment you say, you see it from their eyes, all the tension just drains away. Believe me, it really works. It really, really works. My business would not be here unless it was that. <coughs> I was never a good negotiator, but I could empathise with people. Very, very powerful, believe me. And people don't see that as being a negotiating skill. We, we want to deal with people who we have rapport with, don't we? And trust with. Who do you go and buy, buy something from? Someone you trust. Is that, does that make sense, everyone? Is that, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, now we're going on to the job interview. I want to throw this in because I suspect a few of you, you know, with job interviews, considering changing your job, It's a little thing that I've read about, and it happens a lot. Right at the start of a job interview, someone may say to you, the person interviewing you may say, well, what sort of salary are you expecting? You've got to resist answering that. That's negotiable. I'll be happy to discuss it with you later, if you feel unsuitable for the position. Okay, fine, well, let's crack on then. We want to get into salary once they're happy with us. Once they want to offer us the job, then we start talking about money. We don't want you want someone interviewing you going, well, you know, I want, I want 50 grand. Be here for that. Ooh, that's a bit steep. I'll get rid of him. Get the next person in. <laughs> but they do that. It's a lazy way of that. It's a lazy way of interviewing people. It really is. So just defer that. And you can easily defer it very nicely. What do you expect? Well, that's negotiable. Perhaps we can talk about it later if you feel I'm suitable for the position. 
Let's dug up. Okay. And then once you're in a position where they want you, once you've sold yourself, then they come back and they say, okay, well, what would you expect? Well, what's on offer? You know, I've interviewed people before where I thought, it's a 30 grand job. And I'm paying 50 grand because, wow, they wowed me. Very valuable to me. Certainly worth twenty thousand pounds a me a year. But if you if you get that, just bear that in mind. Defer it. Knock it off for a while. And come back to that later. I'm going to show a few more things now. A few more. I said you can't script negotiations. You can't. You can't. You should just. You can't tell where it's going to go. You really can't. But I'm going to show you a few things now that you can use. A few more things you can just have there and you can chuck up as you see fit. Okay, can I think about it? We, 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 we discussed a little bit earlier on. Don't be scared of that one. People often try and push you into a decision. But if, you, if you're not comfortable, you know, your gut feeling, <laughs> gut feeling is everything. If it doesn't feel right, I want to think about that. Well, how long for? I'm trying to decide. Oh, I'll be sold. Oh, you'll lose it. Never fall for that one. Nothing. It's really tricky negotiating the purchase of something if you fall in love with it. Avoid, try and avoid falling in love with the house. Avoid falling in love with the car. Because believe me, you become maybe you become prey then. You got you got you got to stay away from it. It's a tricky one. It's really easy to negotiate anything if you don't care about it that much. So be prepared to walk away. And gut feeling, gut feeling is everything. You know, we tell not to use it. Believe me, you, you will feel it here. It doesn't feel quite right. We think about that. What would you do, it's a nice one, if you're, in a, if you're in a situation where you're dealing with professional people and you feel a bit out of your depth and they're trying to put you in to make it, they're trying to sell you something and you're not sure about it, just scratch your head and go, you know what, I can't decide. What would you do if you're in my position? That's not a nice one for a salesman to get. You see him, you see him moving around in a chair. I like that. It tends to force a reaction. So just straight back at them. <coughs> what would you do if you were in my position? Well, I would do this. Ooh, well, I'll think about that. And then you're seeing this coming up. Well, how about we give you this and we'll give you that and we'll give you this. Okay, well, keep coming. Keep it coming. Okay. How close will you go? This is a very, very powerful tool you can use. Very, very, very easy to use. Let me explain. You're going in for a job, you're going for a job interview. Or you're, you're, they called you back for your, your, your second interview. You think, I'm confident they're going to offer this job here. You think, well, you know what? I need, I need £45,000 to make any sense of this job. Anyway, there's your figure. £45,000, 45, so it's a very bad pound sign there. <coughs> and they say to you, ah, you know, it was, the position really is 37, yeah, please sit down there. The position, the position really is 37,500. So, they're coming from here. 37,500. So then we look at it and go, ooh. Hmm. You go quiet for a while. 
and you say to them, how close to the 45,000 would you go? This, this, this forces a reaction. And I'll show you in a minute when it comes to buying and selling, it's even, it's even powerful. This forces a reaction. They want you, they, they don't want you to come working for them. If you look at it and go, oh, 37,000, oh, oh, crikey, um, you know, I need more than that. I need more than that. Well, how about we give you 38,500? And they're going up in small increments. When you say, how close to 45 will you go? They've probably got 42 in their minds they can get to. And it forces them up. How, cl how close to my figure will you go? Not how close to their figure. How close to my figure will you go? Well, 42,000. Can, can we agree on... 43,500. Hang on one second, let me go and find out. And off they go, and they come back. Okay. We've got them much, ne sorry, much nearer, 43,500. Basically all we've done is we've given away 1,500 pounds. They've moved up, what's that? Six grand. Now, I'm going to show that again. You can do this, this, this works many ways. You can do it that way. This is not the best. This is not the best one. Rishi, I do apologise. I'll, I'll get some detergent and I'll get this a bit later on for you. Um, I want to show this again. All right. Let's say you, buy, you want to buy a car. And the car is £12,000. Can you see that? Sorry, £12,000. All right, it's not very good. You look at the car and you say, you know, I love the car. The car's nice. I'd like to offer you £11,000 for it. Now, the salesman, you don't want to hear that. But it's got to be, you've got to, it has to start from somewhere. Or go lower, £10,500. We'll make it simple. We'll offer £11,000. Anyway, you go through the silences, and you sit there and wait, and the salesman will say to you, well, we can't, can't accept that. Can't accept 11,000, it's too, way too low, can't do that. Costs more than that. It's all rubbish, by the way. Um, now, you understand, getting it at 11,000 pounds, it's probably a bit of a steal. You're not going to get 11,000 pounds. What we don't want to do is end up splitting it. Okay? We don't want to agree at 11.5. Because if what they'll try and say to us is they'll say, well, look, if, we can, if I can go to my boss and talk to him about 11,500, so straight away you're going, okay, if you agree to that, 11,500, here goes in the back, comes back, and I've got some great news. 11,750, you'll spit it with you. <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden you're there. Now, if we, if we turn around and we chuck that in, Eleven thousand pounds. You're all quiet on them, and you say, "How close to eleven thousand pounds will you go?" It's my budget. It's all I've got. How close to eleven thousand pounds? So I can think about it. How close to eleven thousand pounds will you go? He'll go in the back, come back out, or perhaps he, he, he can authorise it himself. He will say, "You know what? I can go eleven thousand five hundred." I can come down 500 pounds. So what you respond with? Yeah. Let's split that. <laughs> 11,250. How about we split it? Can we do a deal at that? I, I may get a full 250 pounds more. So what we've done, it forces them to move. Now, I mean, you know, I, I'm not saying go and pick all these car sales deal, but anything you do, you're buying, if you're buying a house, I don't buy a house today, you're not offering it, it goes to bloody more money, but um, you know, you can you can you can use that. It, it it forces a figure out of them. We ought to know where they're coming from. It forces a price out of them. Or anything. It could, an agreement. It, it could it could not be monetary, it could be something else. It could be a number of things that we're negotiating on. 
is my terms. How, how close to my terms will we go? Because once we get that, fantastic. Push a little bit more, and we wrap it up. When we've got that, if I can, will you? Or if I agree, do we have an agreement? You'll be very careful when you start, if people want something from you, and you want something from them, you, you, want to, you want to do a deal with these people about something, but they want a little bit much from you. You may want to go into the bank to borrow some money and start your own company. You know, they may say, is there, is there some security on there you can put on this? If I can offer some security, have we got an agreement? What this does, it wraps things up. If you say, yeah, I can do that, they go, okay, and have you got that? Yeah, I got that as well. Okay, and have you got that? We, we, we want to wrap things up. If I can, will you? If I can offer you this, if I can agree to that, if I come down to that, will you? Yes, I will. Fantastic. Let's, 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 let's do a deal. We want to wrap things up. We want to keep things... We don't want things... It, it's, you know, we want to keep things back at the last minute when they turn around and go, will you do something? And we know we can do it. We want to close on that. We, we don't want them to be asking for anything else. If I can, will you do it? Yes, I will. Just a bit of an odd one here, chucking up. Be very careful of ultimatums. Do you know what I mean by this? If, if, you're, if you're negotiating with a boss, over the purchase of the house. <coughs> Nothing worse than give me that or I'm going. Give me that pay rise or I'm off. I want this so I'm going to go. You, you know what you may get? Bye. You've got to try and get out of that one. I don't say don't use it, but you've really got to be, be in a position of power, the position of strength to use that. It can be very effective, but only when you hold all the trump cards. It really is. You know, you can't. You got so you get that. I'm going to go show. That's it. I'm not going to do. It. You know, we have people come into show and going, okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to show my girlfriend how to buy a car. And they walk in. And we like we're nice people. And they walk in. And I myself on that, and they'll say, well, he, 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 she, she's brought a boyfriend with her, and, and, and you know, he's giving it large a little bit. And he's going to the showroom, going, that's it. That price, or we're going to go. We're going to go. And we, sometimes we, at that price, we just can't do it. We can't do it. And we have to say goodbye to them. Or they may lie. This happens. I've seen it much, much cheaper. We've seen it. Thousands of pounds off, yeah. and we know they can't do it. Because as, 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 as a main dealer, I got involved with master franchise. A part, a part of the European agreement is I know what every dealer pays for a car. I know we know that. Someone comes in and goes, "Well, I can buy it. three thousand pounds cheaper somewhere else." Come, it's okay. That's it. We're going to go. We should do it. We're going to go. There you go. Okay. Well, look, we're really, and you know, all you can do is. Try and give them a way out. You don't want to say, right, bugger off then. You, know? <laughs> you want to give them, you know, we, want, we want their business. So you need to give them, look, are you really, really sure? Perhaps go and check that. Perhaps, perhaps they lied to you. Perhaps they misled you. Because we know they're going to go in the car park and the girlfriend's going to go to a boyfriend, you bloody idiot. <laughs> I want to buy that. They're, they're, they're decent people. I like them. I like the company. I like the car. 
And, 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 and I'll tell you what you see, you see the boyfriend doing the walk of shame back in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. We, have a, we have a little giggle, we really do. But you've got to be careful, you know, you've got to be careful. Chuck up ultimatums. I'm using, I'm using that as a, I hate to, sorry, to keep referring to the car sales environment, but I, we, I do a lot of it. And we negotiate all day long. We, we negotiate in deals all the time. And, and you know, we understand people come in, and, you know, it's a hard earned money. We, to, we totally respect that. But we, you know, we, we, we feel we offer a good price to people. And, you know, we will, we'll offer them a very competitive deal. And, but when they, you know, they chuck an ultimatum up at you, you got to be careful. Other people at my other employees go, oh, give me that one, I'm going to go. I'm thinking, well, you're not a good employee. <laughs> you know? So if you want to go, you can go. You know, I hate to lose anyone. I mean, you know, we don't know. I, I lose very few staff, but, you know, but they say, Steph, how about if we can do this? Okay, fine. We're now negotiating. We're now, you know, we, 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 we've, we've got rid of the ultimatums. Any questions on those at all? Can't think about it. Nice, easy one. Always think about it. Gut feeling. Get, if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Let me think about that. Overnight, think about it. You know, what would you do if you're in my position? What would you do if you're in my position? I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just not sure. I can't decide. If you, if you're me, what would you do? That's a great one to chuck up at a a real hot negotiator. You know, we don't want bullies. We don't be done like that. We don't want people pounding people into making a decision. You know, we want people with empathy, who understand, build rapport, build relationships, build, build this win-win situation. But you know, you get if you if you if you could if you if you ever get that, just chuck it up at them. So what would you do if you're in my position? Well, hang on, that's a difficult one to answer. Um, and how close do you go? You know, if this 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 makes this makes great sense, believe me. You throw up someone, and it will, it, it will always go to you. It will always work to your advantage. Buying or selling, it doesn't matter. Whatever you say, <coughs> how close to my figure can you go? Okay, to summarise, we're almost done. We're almost done. Remember, ask. We don't ask enough. We've got to ask. Don't be scared of asking. Ask, ask again, ask again. You know, it's a tough world, I tell you, it's freaking tough. You guys know this. You, know, you don't ask, you, you, you've got to ask the stuff. You don't ask, you don't get. I'm trying to teach my kids that. You know, you, you, you've really, you, you, you've got to, you know, you've got to ask for it. Prepare yourself, do your research. You've got, you've got, to, you've got to be, you've got to know what you're talking about. You will win negotiations. You will close deals, you will sell more, you will make more. Prepare yourself. Are you prepared for it? Hey, I tell you what, wasn't for that, I would I would I'd be finished. Listen, become remember that 25%, listen to everything they say. And then pause. Think of your response. Empathize. That's lovely, because you know, people don't say they think to be a negotiator, you've got to be some type of big hard bully to negotiate properly. Just empathize with people. They'll love you for it. Once they love you for it, you can ask them anything you want. People are often surprised to see that in a negotiating course. You know, the days of the 80s, people pound people into making a decision. Don't care about them. You make that decision. Take their money. Take money and run. Hey, it's all finished. It's about relationships. It's about not this year, it's next year, year after that. Have faith, be bold. And this one that my children do all the time. No means maybe, and maybe means yes. <laughs> Believe me, that's something I learned at the time.